Okay, so what I'm showing off here is that I took, I have four, four positive leads and four negative leads um, because I have four ESCs. So to try to put them all on the top here is going to be one heck of a headache. I could have maybe made a Y of some kind, like a Y harness. But what I did here is I just put two on the bottom and I'm going to put two more on top. Um, the other thing too is I, I made sure to tin this pad right here. This is the pad for if you want to run Lewis scripts. So you want to put your smart port right here. If you have an FR Sky receiver. Um, to do this, this is kind of a headache to hold all this stuff. I, so I just got these little clamps here. I think I got these at the dollar store. I'm not sure. I got them a long, long time ago. So I just, you know, basically they don't have much spring to them. But I just kind of clamped the wires down and then and then soldered and made sure there was no rosin going onto the board. It all stayed right here nice and puddled up. So, and then the tip that I use, I just changed up my tip to a nice big fat tip and turned my, uh, turned my soldering station up to 450 degrees Celsius. So I was able to get nice, you know, get pretty good solder, you know, solder joints here. Um, this one's really nice. It's really nice and lots of solder on that, lots of heat. But both of them are nice and shiny. They're not dull, as you can see here. So just wanted to show you what I'm doing there. And then when I'll flip the board up when I mount it and tuck these wires. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show that here. Right, I'm back bit. on the build here. So I kind of jumped ahead a little bit and got quite a bit of stuff done here. Um, and I just wanted to go over some of it. So let me get my handy-dandy pointer out. Okay, so a few things. Um, as you can see, I have all the ESCs hooked up. The um, wires tucked underneath the um, the FC here, and I, I welded uh, two on top for the ESCs. Two two of the power on top, two on bottom, two of the negative on top, two on bottom. I got my um, battery leads in. Got my battery. I drilled a, I drilled two holes in the frame, and zip tied the. Um, the battery leads down to the frame so because I'm going to be pulling on pushing on this I don't want it to pull off the pads or pull on anything else um, and you can see the layout here um, this wire right here this is actually to motor number three and what happened was is I got into a conversation um, that got me distracted and when I was soldering these I was using 450 degrees Celsius just so I could quickly get them on there, get them, get it heated up. Um, I didn't want any wicking going on into these wires to make them stiff right here, so I wanted it really quick. And um, I accidentally left it on that setting when I started welding onto the board. And when I welded on the motor three wire, there was so much heat it actually scrubbed off the pad. Um, it just came right off the board. So. These pads are very, very thin, and that's because it's a multi-layered board. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on on this board, and that's kind of what we're demanding in the hobby is, you know, a lot more functionality, a lot more components being shoved in a very small space. So something's got to give, and these, uh, these pads are, you know, it's a multi-layered board, so these pads are just right on that top layer, and if you have too much heat, they'll just scrub right off. But that's not a problem for this board because this board was actually made for an octocopter. Yeah, an octocopter. So I have plenty of other pads to go around. Um, what I did is I just took mo uh, the motor lead off this ESC here, the signal lead, and I put it over here on uh, number five, I believe it was five or six, and then I just went into Beta Flight and just uh, reassigned the um, the resources. So. Took the took what's normally on, you know, normally the resource for um, motor number three, and then just applied that to number five over here. So it worked out just fine. A um, couple of things here. So I like the fact that FR Sky started using the silicon wire. That's a big bonus. This is the RXSR receiver. It's great that they're not using that plastic crappy wire, unlike uh, Raystar. This is that plastic junk-ass wire. I hate that stuff. I hate it with a passion. It should never be used, ever, ever, ever. It's horrible, horrible, you know, just, ugh. 
So I like this. This is a big improvement for theirs, for their stuff. However, once again, FR Scott, I just don't understand why they cannot understand certain things. Um, you know, the inversion uh, for the smart port in, is just stupid. I, I don't even know why they do it. I know they, they know they have a pin right here. And if, if you are a neurosurgeon, you could probably wire a, you know, a pretty good wire on here and get rid of that inversion. But I, I just don't understand. I, I don't know if the people over at FR Sky fly quadcopters, but I just do not understand why they continue to stick to their guns with this inversion garbage. Um, it's, it's just dumb. So, and then another thing too, is it needed to be updated. Um, in order to get the Lua script to work, I had to update the firmware on this one. Um, also too, they're, they're back to using the fifth wave antenna instead of quarter wave like they should be. And, you know, I don't understand the logic. It's five millimeters more, a little over five millimeters more um, to go with quarter wave, and it's a much better signal. But you know, we're back to this, this here. I, I just, I just don't get it. The cool thing about it is, is you can get different antennas that have the quarter wave. So, yeah. So anyway, that's that pretty much covers this thing here. Um, I, I just don't understand why they. I guess they're going to come out with a version that doesn't that has an uninverted pin for the. Um, for the smart port but they currently don't so really kind of strange um, yeah and then they kind of changed it around a little bit too the green wire uh, is now for the S bus as opposed to the light wire so I'm just let you know might confuse some people um, that's pretty much about it it's just a lot of this is just making sure that when I get my wires in here and I get the top on um, you know I don't I don't pull on any of these wires because it will pull the pads right off of the boards uh, or off the board I'm sorry um, and just trying to get it so it's tight it's held together it can't get snagged on anything um, probably will zip tie this these bunches together so they don't lift off of uh, and get pulled on as far as the camera goes um, this is made for a full-size camera if you put a full body camera in here the lens will stick out um, and I'm using the Swift Micro, uh, partly because it's it's light, the performance is good, but I wanted the the camera to sit farther back than these uprights here. I, I any anything that hits, I want it to hit here. I don't want it to hit the camera. I'm tired of replacing lenses and cameras. So in order to make this work, I had to come up with kind of an adapter here, and I'll try to get it in here. Um, so what I did is I took a couple pieces of plastic and drilled two holes. Um, and the way it works is that it's kind of like, these are my test pieces here, but it's kind of like this. So the camera goes here, and then this bolts to the frame. So you can see there's an offset there. And the offset was because if you just go straight through on the frame, to the camera, the camera sits too far back, and then you'll start to see these uprights in your video. So I wanted to, I wanted to move it ahead about a millimeter, well, actually about two millimeters ahead, and that's what allowed me to do that. So, and I also made some plastic bushings here. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I made some plastic bushings here so that it helps hold it together. Um, another modification I did is I had some red standoffs. And I went ahead and cut them down. I wanted standoffs here, and I wanted a standoff here. And the reason why is because the only thing that's keeping these two pieces from squishing together is the camera and this piece of uh, carbon fiber. And there's a piece of carbon fiber that goes here, plus that. So without these here, you you lose. You know, it, it could actually squish if you hit down on on the top, and I don't want that. So. By adding these two things, it doesn't hardly add any weight and makes a lot stronger piece here. So, so everything's updated. Um, I went in and set up the receiver in Betaflight, set up the smart port in Betaflight, set up everything I wanted to in Betaflight, tested the motors in Betaflight. Um, I did have to reassign the, the resources for this pin. 
because of my mistake. Um, so everything's pretty much ready to go. I just have to attach the beeper, which uh, is underneath here, unfortunately. So I'll probably just have to cut this, put the beeper on, and you know, re-zip tie it down. And the beeper is just going to have to, I wanted the beeper to be on the board, but it's just going to have to be in here. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I, I'd like to shrink wrap. I, I'd like to actually put some shrink tubing on this because I don't want it to touch any anything down here and short anything out. Um, but if I do that, then of course I can't see the LEDs. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, I wish they, I wish it would come with some uh, with a clear um, like like some of their other receivers. They just come with a clear shrink wrap. I don't know why they didn't do that with this one. And then when you also, that's another kind of warning out there for newer people is anytime you use double-sided sticky tape, be careful where your double-sided sticky taping to because you could actually pull up subcomponents off boards in a rack or if you're trying to service the, the quadcopter later on and you go and you, you pull this off of here, you could actually end up pulling some of, this, some of these subcomponents right off the board. That's happened to me. Um, it's happened to me actually recently. Um, so you have to be really careful about using double-sided sticky tape. Um, I think my next quadcopter build, well, no, not my next one, but the one after that, which will be the Breakneck 205 by Neato Frames. Um, I'm actually going to use a, a full-size board that stacks, you know, stacks with the ESCs and the FC. And that way it just bolts down solid. I don't have to worry about something flopping around or double stick, sticky taping something. Um, so I think I'm going to do that next time because it's just a, it's so much cleaner. And it's a lot more robust. So I just wanted to put that out there for new people. Just be careful where you're sticking stuff to because you go to rip it up and, oh, wow, there's part of my, my FC. And now it doesn't work. That's great. So all righty, guys. So there's the wiring. It's all done. Like I said, this, this quad is a not a beauty queen it's about um it's about how inexpensive it is and it's about um, me pushing my limits and not really caring about what my quadcopter looks like so all right